The Acer Chromebook Tab 10 is the first Chrome OS tablet starting at around 330 US dollars. It directly competes with the 2018 iPad and higher end Android tablets. While it is aimed at the education market, everybody can buy it. So is the first Chrome OS tablet a good one? I'm NJ for MyNextTablet.com and this is my Acer Chromebook Tab 10 review. Alright, I'm starting this review with the design and build quality. Regarding this, the Acer Chromebook Tab 10 is a bit disappointing. It does feel solid and I'm sure it's well built, but it kind of looks like a children's toy. In fact, it does not feel high end at all. A lot of competitors in this price range like the 2018 iPad or the Huawei Media Pad M5 offer a full metal body. They feel much higher end. However, the Acer Chromebook Tab 10 has a plastic body only. On the back there is a nice texture which makes it easy to hold and there are big black bezels around the screen. They don't look that nice but again make it easy to hold onto. Oh well, it's not premium feeling but it is aimed at students so I guess it's fine. The Chromebook Tab 10 is charged using a USB-C connector all the way on the bottom. Using that port you can also connect accessories like external hard drives. We get a standard headphone jack on the top and there are volume controls and the power button on the left side. It features a micro SD card reader too. On the top and bottom we get a speaker each, so two in total. The sound quality is not that great but certainly acceptable for watching some YouTube or so. And this goes for the main 5 megapixel camera and the 2 megapixel front facing camera too. The quality is kind of bad but yeah, just acceptable for Skype. Another built in feature is the slot for the Wacom stylus on the bottom left. The Acer Chromebook Tab 10 has a 9.7 inch display with an aspect ratio of 4 by 3. It is an IPS panel with decent viewing angles and a resolution of 2048 by 1536. Yes, that is the exact same resolution of tablets like the iPad or the Samsung Galaxy Tab S3. Thanks to the high resolution screen, text and icons look very sharp. Color and the contrast are alright too, but not outstanding. I also like that we are getting a laminated screen here. So there's no air gap between the IPS panel and touchscreen. In addition to that, it's certainly bright enough to use inside and it's also good enough to work a bit outside. So overall, I quite like this display. It's a good one, but not outstanding either. When comparing it with the recent iPad, you can see that Apple shows a bit better screen, but the differences are minor. Inside runs a Rockshop Arcas 3399 Hexa processor, which is certified by Google to use with Chromebooks. The ship consists of two powerful cores and four efficient cores. Other specs include 4GB of RAM and a 32GB internal storage. Out of those, you can use just above 22GB by yourself. Even though Rockjob processors have a kind of bad reputation, this chipset is actually fast enough for most tasks. The performance is especially good enough to run the Chrome browser with a lot of tabs open. Yes, even complex websites load quite nicely. And yes, that is much better than with similar priced Windows tablets. For example, I've been running Google Docs, YouTube and my WordPress backend at the same time and everything worked great. The operating system itself, the Play Store and the on-screen keyboard run fine too and this goes for most Android apps as well. While it is not perfect for heavy multitasking, you can use two or three apps at the same time without any major lagging. For example, I use Chrome and Word together all the time and it works great. However, I noticed that the system completely froze up a couple of times after opening a lot of apps after another, mainly Android apps. Actually, I think it's the fault of Chrome OS, which might not be optimized enough for tablets and Android apps yet, but it could also be the weak processor. Compared to Android, there's a major difference in how both operating systems handle multitasking. In Android, apps running in the background get closed automatically if needed, especially if there's not enough RAM. However, that is not the case in Chrome OS. You are responsible for closing apps just like with any other desktop operating system like Windows. 
This behavior has some advantages. For example, you can just leave a YouTube video or Netflix running while you're looking something up in another app and still listen to the audio part and come back to the video anytime. But the system can't handle a lot of apps at the same time. So you have to actively close them. That's just something to remember when switching to Chrome OS from Android or iOS. As you can see in my benchmark comparison, the Acer Chromebook Tab 10 gets similar results to mid-range Android tablets and that is how it behaves in real life too. As I said, most things do run smoothly, but it's not ideal for multitasking. You can install almost every app from the Play Store and that includes Android games. I tried Asphalt Extreme and Players Unknown Battlegrounds Mobile and both games run on this tablet. They look okay too, but not as good as on higher end devices. Alright, as you can see, you can play games on the Acer Chromebook Tab 10 if you really want to, but I wouldn't recommend you get this if you're looking for a gaming tablet. Similar priced Android tablets or the regular iPad offer a much better gaming performance. Let's take a look at the most interesting feature of the Acer Chromebook Tab 10, the operating system. It is the first tablet running Chrome OS. While there have been convertible notebooks in the past, this is the first tablet with a touchscreen only. Chrome OS is based on Linux and the Chrome browser. In fact, most of the time you will be using the browser here and it looks and works just like Chrome for Windows or Mac OS, including all extensions. Compared to Android, Chrome OS devices have a huge advantage. Updates are delivered directly and regular by Google and not the manufacturer. So Chrome OS tablets will be running the latest software much longer than any Android tablet is. With Chrome OS you can use tons of web apps that you can get in the Chrome Web Store. For some of them you must be online, but a lot work offline too. In addition to that, the Chromebook Tab 10 is shipped with the Google Play Store and you can install most Android apps. Chrome OS is quite easy to use. There's a home screen, which is mostly empty. On the bottom there's a dock which you can use to navigate. Just like on Android, there's a back button and a button to open the app drawer or launcher. Built into this taskbar are app shortcuts and currently opened apps, as well as an overview over your notifications and quick settings. The notifications look just like on Android. You can open the app drawer or launcher with a swiping up gesture. All the way on the right there's another button which is used for multitasking. You can get an overview of opened apps and can open them next to each other. Chromebooks are very interesting if most things you do can be done in a browser. The Chrome browser here is excellent and it works great. It looks just like Chrome on Windows or Mac OS, but it is a lot faster than similar priced Windows tablets. However, you don't have to use Chrome on web apps only. As I mentioned, the Play Store is pre-installed and you can download most Android apps, so you don't have to use Google Docs. Instead, you can download Microsoft Word, or maybe even Edge and Firefox or Adobe Lightroom. All of this works just like on Android. That's the case for multitasking too. However, while you can open two apps side by side just like on Android, you cannot open them in separate windows. I hope you can change that in the future, just like you can choose the tablet mode in Windows 10. Chrome OS has a lot of touchscreen features built in already, but it is not perfect yet. Sometimes it's obvious that it was originally intended to use with a keyboard and mouse. For example, when setting up the Chromebook Tab 10, there's a little introduction with keyboard shortcuts. Well, there's no keyboard here. There are some other things missing. One feature I would like is a gesture to close an app. Right now, you have to use a small X icon. And again, you really have to remember to close apps here. But alright, that is fine and I can live with that. Chrome OS is not perfect for tablets yet, but it is usable already. In fact, I think Chrome OS had a lot of potential and the developer beta has new touch features already. Another important feature of the Acer Chromebook Tab 10 is the Wacom Stylus, which comes inside the box and does not have to be bought separately. The pen requires no batteries and is pressure sensitive with 2048 levels. You can store the stylus inside the tablet itself. And that has some advantages, but it has some downsides too. Well, obviously you won't lose it that easily. However, it is very thin, much thinner than the Microsoft Surface Pen or Apple Pencil. After a while, it can be uncomfortable to hold for longer drawing or writing sessions. Once you take out the pen, a little menu pops up with software features for the stylus. 
Using those, you can take screenshots and annotate them or cut something out or take handwritten notes in Google Keep. If you want, you can use the pen as a magnifying tool or as a lasing pointer. The Chromebook Tab 10 has a standard on-screen keyboard from Google and it supports handwriting recognition. Because of that, you can use your handwriting to write in any app or website. However, it is not as smooth as on Android or Windows 10. I've got a pretty bad handwriting and it doesn't recognize it sometimes. Windows 10 on the other hand recognizes it surprisingly well. Anyways, overall the pen works just as it should. You can also use it in Android apps like Autodesk Sketchbook. Inside the Acer Chromebook Tab 10 sits a battery with a capacity of 8860 mAh. That is enough for a runtime of 10 hours in my battery test. For this test, I'm always looping an HD video at 50% brightness and activated Wi-Fi. As you can see in my comparison, there are quite some Android tablets and iPads that last longer. However, some last much shorter too. So the Chromebook Tab 10 results are um, yeah, alright. The same goes for everyday use. It certainly will last you a day when doing some web browsing in Chrome and working in Word. But obviously it depends on what you're doing. So is the Acer Chromebook Tab 10 a good first Chrome OS tablet? Well, considering it is the first, it is pretty good and I enjoyed using it. I think Chrome OS tablets are exciting and Google did a lot of things right here. At the same time, you can use Android apps too, so you get the best out of both worlds. A great desktop class browser including extensions and Android apps. And don't forget, updates are delivered by Google directly. The only thing I'm not a huge fan of is, is the design. Since it costs over 300 US dollars, it would have been nice to get a full metal body. That is what competitors like the iPad and Huawei MediaPad M5 offer. But alright, the Chromebook Tab 10 is aimed at students too, so maybe the design is great for that. All other aspects are pretty good. The performance is good enough and the display has a nice resolution. Well, the pen could be thicker, but at least it's free and it works just fine. So should you buy the Acer Chromebook Tab 10? If you know that you need a Chrome OS tablet, then sure, get it. While it is not perfect yet, it also does not have any huge downsides and it will get improved over time. However, if you don't like to experiment with new systems and are not part of the education market, you might want to wait for a future Chrome OS tablet or just get an iPad or Huawei MediaPad M5. With those, you get a nice metal body, features like a fingerprint sensor and a much better gaming performance for about the same price. Alright, that's my review of the Acer Chromebook Tab 10. If you have any questions, just write them down below. I'm NJ for MyNextTablet.com. Thanks for watching.